It's Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Houston Texans and the Atlanta Falcons coming up next. First opened in 2017, there's a look at the beautiful state-of-the-art Mercedes-Benz Stadium here in Atlanta, GA. Coming up, we've got what should prove to be a good one, as it'll be the Houston Texans taking on the Atlanta Falcons. Brandon Gordon joined in the booth by Charles Davis. That's CD. These Falcons seem to be in an interesting spot coming into 2023. They've seemingly got playmakers galore on offense, but they may only be as good as what their defense can do for them. And that defense, 27th overall in the league last year, so they must improve. In order to help them, though, they're going to try and control the ball more on the offensive side, try and run it a little bit more, take some time off the clock. Meanwhile, for the Texans, things are changing rapidly in the Space City. They've got the new coach and D'Amico Ryans coming over from the Niners. They made two big splashes on draft night, but fixing the defense seems a priority. And remember the 2022 draft? They took a lot of guys on that side of the ball, so maybe we just need a little bit more seasoning with some of the talent that they've accumulated. Seems like we were just starting training camp, but here we are in October, and off we go on EA Sports. He's still barreling through. <laughs> and out a little across the 25 to the 27. And now we'll get a stoppage here. There appears to be an injured Falcon on the field. But the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. Texas, it's B. John Robinson. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. He'll wind up getting a yard on the game's first play. It's second down. Looking to throw it here. Ritter. That's Cordero Patterson hauling it in. So five yards here, five on the play. And just like that, it's third down. Ritter. Look in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he's going to have a Falcons first down as they're able to get the third down. Well, we know he can run the football, too, but he's a good pass catcher. That's been on display here, Charles, on this opening drive. And we certainly have seen the benefits of what he did in the offseason, which was spend more time with wide receivers working on routes, working on cuts, in order to make himself a more complete running back and even more of a threat downfield. On first and ten, it's Robinson. A solid step on and a strong run that time as he's across midfield and down to the 43. Now after the play, it looks like there's a Texan here slow to get up. Well, hopefully, obviously nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, going to take a peek and we'll take a break. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 43. Back to Robinson now on first down. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple and that's it. Ball on the 40 now. Here's second down and eight.
Ritter now. And he couldn't get that one to his man. Short of him, it's low and incomplete. They are such a talented team at defending the perimeter and taking away throws to the outside. Great confidence, great skill. The line to gain is the 33 on third down. Ritter will set up to throw it. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 18. Give him 22 there on the third down conversion. Well, on third down, he wanted to go to one of his most dependable targets, and that's who he found, his tight end there, to pick up the first, Charles. And he used the proper word there, dependable, and sometimes spectacular, because tight ends nowadays, they can do it all. But they're the guys you trust, especially across the middle of the field where there's traffic. He delivers, and they pick up nice yardage. Back to the ground with Robinson. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. That was a good illustration of setting the edge as a defensive end, being able to make sure that you stay on your feet no matter what type of block, and you're not going to get pushed inside stayed home, skated to the outside, and made the play. Ritter. And this one is incomplete. And that might have been a situation where even though you don't hit on the deep throw, you at least put in the defender's minds early in the game that we're going to press the ball deep against your secondary. And that can have a ripple effect on how they function throughout. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Here's Ritter. That ball is caught. It's London for the Atlanta touchdown. From 21 yards away. And the Falcons are on the board first here this afternoon. Well, they spoke about the importance of getting off to a good start. And they're on their first drive, Charles, into the end zone for the touchdown. And what an advantage for them. They're already clicking one drive in. Didn't need to wait to get up to full speed. We had heard about the extra time they put in with each other, trying to learn each other's skills, what they liked, the whole deal, and it paid off early in this one. I would expect them to keep firing on the next drive and keep that connection going. Following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. So here are the Texans now with a fresh face at quarterback, the second overall pick from Ohio State, C.J. Stroud. In only two seasons, Stroud showed all he needed to at Ohio State. All-American, Heisman Finals, program records galore. He looked every bit like the number one overall pick. He went number two, but Houston is thrilled to have him. seven-yard line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it, but the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up the score. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. A pickup of 11 and a Texans first down. They had three tight ends in on that set, and they were really good at blocking for their running back. And give them a lot of credit because in football nowadays, tight ends coming out of college often don't block very often. These guys have really developed into superior blockers, and that's why they use them in this formation so often. Stroud's throw completed to Mechie. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. A good pick up there, 26 yards. Oh, 
from Falcon territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 35-yard line. First and 10, it's Pierce. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop him. That's now a pair of explosive plays in succession, both north of 20 yards. You were telling me this yesterday. This is exactly what they want to do on the opening drive, establish the ground game. Yeah, remember our conversation? We were talking about what one of the GMs in the league has told me repeatedly. It's a big man's game, and it's not necessarily size. He's talking about playing some big boy football. Line up. Get. He'll be hit and taken down at the 21. He couldn't get rid of it. He takes a sack for a loss of six to bring up second down. It's interesting, partner, that most defenses try and guard the 35-yard line actively because they think the way kickers are nowadays, about a 52-yard field goal, they're kind of giving up points. But you get even deeper into territory, you get into the red zone, they're going to guard it even more, which means more pressure, more blitzing. They'll head out of bounds inside the 10, mark him down at the 9. 44 yards rushing for him now to this point. I was pretty surprised there when they lined up to run it on second and long, but it worked out for him. It certainly did, and that requires some confidence, some fortitude, and a little bit of hope, doesn't it? You hope you catch the defense just right and break off a big run to help yourself out on the next down. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. The drive stays alive, a third down gain of eight. So they gave up the early touchdown. This has been a pretty good response. Nice drive, taking it down first and goal. And I know all the cliches jump in, right? Don't get away from your game plan too early. Make sure you're settled down. Don't panic. But it's all true, isn't it? Because otherwise, you get out of what you plan to do during the game, and it's still early. Don't get crazy because you gave one up. Just respond as you just noted. Here's Pierce. Touchdown, Houston. And there's an offense that didn't panic after getting down early, and with good reason. No better way to silence a home crowd than with a nice, long, sustained drive. And they were able to put one together here and finish with the touchdown run. Kaimi Fairbairn on for the extra point. It's up and good. So these teams match touchdowns here in the first quarter, and we're tied 7-7. Each team's had it. Each team has scored. 7-7 here as the kick's away. Taken at the goal line. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. So for the second time in this one, we get set to see the Falcons' offense. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. They start on the ground with Robinson here. And he got blown up on that play. Back at the 20. Two yards the loss, second and 12. That's a nice job there, foiling what all offenses try to do, which is control the defensive end in the running game. They want to get to the outside, and if he keeps himself free, stays on his feet, he can make a play just as he did there. Ritter from the gun. Complete. Smith has it. And he will lose yardage on the play. Back at his own 19-yard line. Third down, now even tougher. Third and 13 after that loss of a yard. It looked like the defense, they were ready for that one. Really left him almost no room to work after catching the ball. He could throw every move in the book at him. They were there, and they tackle him for a loss. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. It's caught. It's Miller. And he'll get this to the 23, but that'll be well short of what he needed. 
The result, only four yards there on the play. And that's going to make it fourth down. Well, we hear so often how tackling has become almost a lost art in the NFL game. But it's so important to tackle well on these receivers, especially in a play like this one. Third down, they gave him the underneath stuff. You got to go up and make the tackle right away. The punt team on now as Pinion sends this one away. It's a 39-yard punt, three on the return. And the Texans will take over with a first and 10. So now we get set to see Houston for their second drive of the ball game. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. Then confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you've scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go around. First and 10, it's Stroud. And his throw's going to be incomplete. We talk all the time about playmakers on offense, but let's face it, there are plenty of playmakers on defense, too. I think we just saw an example of one, didn't we? Not force that incompletion. Yeah, he's a great corner. They got a couple of them on that side of the football. Here's second and 10. Here's Stroud. That is incomplete. Well, they approached this drive with a lot of confidence after the last one ended up as a touchdown. But incompletions on their first two throws has them humbling up and trying to figure out a big play here on third down to get their momentum going again. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. Stroud on third down now. Over the middle, that's caught by Mechie. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the close fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. On third down, you'll give him that. You just want to make sure that you play the first down line. They were able to get him down and force the punt. The Texans send the punter out as he's on a punt for the first time this afternoon. This is taken at the 15. 35 yards that time on the punt. And it will be Falcon football. Atlanta regains possession of the football. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there was a quick three and out, then they punted to football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. Ritter and the Falcons now with a first and 10 at their own 22. He'll get it to Robinson to begin the drive. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. A perfect example right there, Charles, of why they love this rookie runner. And think about how the NFL and the college games are meshing together more and more. You don't have to go to the NFL and learn a new set of skills. What you did in college often makes you ready for the NFL. Oh, an absolutely filthy joke. He's got some space now. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking. And that's from the offensive linemen creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before, they always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. Second down and a run by Robinson. And running with power here. And he's got to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. A nice pick up there, 18 yards, first down Falcons. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 37-yard line. That's out quickly to London. So just three yards on the completion there. And it'll be second down. Back to throw, Ritter. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. 
Couldn't hang on third down. Well, it certainly appears that they're going to try and keep getting him the football. It's the third time they've looked in his direction. Unfortunately, haven't completed one yet, but I'm not sure they're going to shy away from him. They feel like they've got something there, and they want to capitalize on I it. I think you're right. We're only in the first quarter, so a lot of opportunities ahead. That is caught, and he's going to be taken down right at the 10-yard line. Well, from an offense's perspective, that sure was pretty because the corner route is extremely difficult to defend from my perspective. What we just saw there, is that sort of the evolution of the tight end position? Yeah, I think it is because more and more, tight ends are being treated like wide receivers. These are some agile players who can make a play in any spot on the field. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. He'll get five out of the scramble. It's second down. play action here's Ritter and he is gonna go down they sack him on the final play of the first quarter 7-7 our score after one back now in Atlanta second quarter action the Falcons with the football as they've got it with a third down coming up back to throw and he wisely will throw that one away blanketed coverage by Houston makes it fourth down and based on my math they've only converted one time thus far in this game so you can see the frustration starting to come out a little bit third downs they've been a problem for them all game they've got to start becoming solutions Houston Texans over on the sideline hoping to hit that reset button between possessions last time out they had to punt it away this time hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone they'll start on the ground with Pierce they'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. From the lineman to the guy running with it, that was a well-executed first down by the offense. With two shots left to get the first, you can get a little aggressive here on second down if you want and try for some bigger yardage. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. They run with the former Buffalo Bill, Devin Singletary. And this will be a Texans first down as he's got this up to the 40-yard line. Stroud to the air on first and 10. Schultz and he'll be taken down but not before he gets into enemy territory a pickup of 11 at a Texans first down 
Well, that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point that continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. Shoves him aside. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. And they'll go play action here with Stroud. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Zone coverage there, they were playing deep. That makes it obviously a little bit harder to run by guys. And that time, it was not much of a window to get the ball in there, and it winds up incomplete. Second and 10. Singletary here running out of the gun. And pretty good running as he'll be close to a first down at the Falcons 23. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. Pierce will try to pick it up. Picks up the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 16. Able to get what they need to keep the drive going with a six-yard pickup on third down. Well, someone's been having a good game so far, and you know something? Lob has been power running. They decided to turn him loose again on third down, didn't they? They did indeed. He delivered the tough yards. First down, they go right back to Pierce. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. 81 yards on the ground for him so far. And hey, when you get good yardage like that on first down, it really does a whole lot of good for your entire offense. But I love the way he's finishing those runs. At the end of things, he's making sure he gets just a little bit extra. Four yards remain on second down. Ball on the 10. On second down, here's Pierce. And a short pickup there down to about the 9. Only a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a third down. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? The offense on third down, they've been okay. Two for three thus far. Here it's third and three. Play action. Here's Stroud. This will be complete to Mechie. Yeah, great effort there to shed the contact, and it helps him pick up the first. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. Well, normally on a third down play, I'm not a huge proponent of play action, but when you run it as effectively as we've seen them do in this game, yeah, it sets it up pretty well. Yeah, particularly on this drive, they've been great running the ball. Good setup. And they'll let the fullback try and take him home. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop it right around the one. It'll be a pickup of four, and it brings up second and goal. Good solid gain on first down, about what you'd expect from the big guy carrying the ball. Second and goal from the one. On second down, it's Stroud. And the timing a bit off that time as that one falls to the ground. They may be snapping the ball near the goal line, but all you're thinking defensively, keep them out of the end zone. Force the incompletion, force them into going for three and not giving up six. I can't imagine we'd see another throw here. Third and goal from the one. They'll send one of those two tight ends in motion. They'll run for it with Pierce. Boy, no chance as he was met and dropped behind the line there. Losing two yards that time, and now it's fourth down. One word comes to mind to me after that last play, and that's alert. That defense took a chance guessing the snap count, and they were so right. Got great push up front, and that forces fourth and goal. So on fourth down, Texan kicker Kaimi Fairbairn comes on. 
from the right hash at a bit of a tight angle. The kick by Fairbairn is good, and that will knot us up at 10. So they get the field goal, but that was a 14-play drive to get three. You sound like you're going negative on that partner. I was. I was. Sounds like, sounds like you're thinking the three is just not that good. And people say that we're negative sometimes. <laughs> so. Well, here's the deal. <laughs> Getting the three is good. Obviously, you would think on a 14-play drive you're going to get six out of it. But that type of a drive can pay dividends later on because you might wear the defense down. All level now at 10 apiece as the kick's away. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. Their drive last time, it stalled out. They were forced to take the short field goal. And the key phrase, you nailed it. Forced to because you know coaches look at these short field goals as a last resort, right? To them, that's not how drives are supposed to end. You're supposed to put six on the board. That's a consolation prize, like going to the county fair. You don't get the big stuffed animal on that one, do you? No, you don't go top shelf. That's bottom shelf material. They will get four yards here on the first down run, and that'll make it second and six. Well, at the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back to huddle and feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. Meanwhile, Wooders thrown into the hands of Pitts here. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. They really love to get him into one-on-one -on -one opportunities, and this is one way, work him out of the slot and create a mismatch. Who's going to cover him? Corner, safety, linebacker? He's got a way to beat all of those positions. And they'll let the quarterback keep him here on first and 10. And he's going to take this one up only to about the 44-yard line. Give him three on the keeper there, and it is second down. Ritter to throw it. They'll get this to his tight end. It's Joe Smith. And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 45-yard line. Looking to throw it here, Ritter. A quick throw there is incomplete. That certainly appeared to be a play call where they were just trying to make second down, second and short. I think they thought the coverage was off a little bit more than it was. Nice job there pressing up on it and forcing the incompletion. Four minutes to play here in quarter number two. Ritter with another throw on second down. Targeting Pitts on the L route and he's got it complete. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. And they'll try and run the option to pick it up. Well, he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. Athleticism on full display there. And the Falcons have moved down in front. So a design run all the way, and he took it the distance. I don't know that anybody saw that guy. Well, on this play, how about the vision of him being able to see the open field, make his move, and get there? Oftentimes, defenses have a spy for the quarterback position to try and take care of it. On that play, if they did, it certainly is lost. Work. Yeah, there's no <laughs> doubt. Extra point by Koo, up and good. And that makes it a 17-10 score.
Now Pinion with a kickoff honors following the touchdown. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. Damian Pierce taking the field with the rest of the Texans offense. Now he's having himself a little bit of a banner game. His team right now, though, losing. Needs a little bit of help. And I kind of equate it to a basketball game where you have the big score. And sometimes your strategy is, okay, he can go ahead and have all of his points. Let's hold down everyone else. And that's the way you win the game. And right now, he needs everyone else to start scoring quote unquote as he's been yeah and he's hoping to keep it close so maybe they can keep it on the ground not start to go through the air as much and the Falcons get there the Falcons get the sack down he goes buried by multiple defenders on the drive's first play and they tried to go with a little play action there but nobody on the defensive side bit yeah, they adjusted in time and in a big way and ultimately got the sack on offense. Sometimes you're running play action just to set up a certain blocking technique. In this case, none of it worked. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. Stroud. Caught by Woods. He'll be dropped at the 25 after a gain of six. The Texans on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third down and 12. They'll run a draw now with Singletary. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. A loss of a yard, and it brings up four. Well, they certainly didn't appear to be fired up about their options throwing the football. So, to me, this seems like a case of just kind of taking their medicine there, run the ball, see if they can pick up something. Instead, they were thrown for a loss. Now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this second quarter. The Texans send the punter out as he'll kick it away for the second time. Taken from just outside the 30. About set to begin their next drive, the Falcons offense at the line. That last drive, it was a good mix. Run, pass, run, pass. Defense on their toes. And what really helps out in a big way is when you're doing the run-pass mix and everything's working, that means that they're guessing wrong every time on defense. They think you're going to pass when you run and vice versa. I would continue that, and when they finally draw a beat on you, maybe you mix it up a little bit, a little play action and throw the ball. And will they maintain that balance? Time to find out. Winner cannot escape, and they bring him down. Christian Harris from that outside linebacker spot gets in there. It's a loss of nine. And this is a quarterback who's already had success on the ground in this first half, but this time they're able to hem him in. And it's always different when you rush a mobile quarterback as opposed to a guy you know will be right back in the pocket. In this case, you got to make sure the inside pressure and the outside pressure match, and maybe even a second wave to make sure if he scores free, you got someone to tackle him. And that was yardage that they needed there after the sack on first down. They didn't get all of it back, but now they look at third down as a manageable situation, one that they have a much better chance of picking up. Now a shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. They decided the opportunity was there and launched a deep ball, but he was unable to get away from the defender, couldn't create space, couldn't uncover at the end of the route, and that one winds up incomplete. So now on comes the field goal unit, and wow, this is no ordinary try here. This will be from 56 yards out. And this is off the left upright, and it comes back, it's no good. And this will remain a one touchdown game. 
So distance not the issue there. He had plenty of leg to get it there. It's that darn upright getting in the way. Always gets in the way of a good time, doesn't it? Because he hit it square, too. Sometimes you can bank one in if you get it on the end of the football. No such luck there for him. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10 at their own 46. Stroud to throw it. And that one off the mark behind him, incomplete. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Again on second down, it's Stroud. And he'll get this underneath to Singletary. Now the Texans will burn the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. Third and two. Stroud now on third and two. A short one going to be taken in here by Schultz. Now the Texans will use one of their two remaining timeouts. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Here goes Stroud again. And he overshot him there. It's out of bounds incomplete. Now it's second and ten. Second and ten, here's Stroud. He'll get the hook up there to Woods. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. From the right hash and call it an even 50 yards. The kick by Fairbairn is good. And that will cut this lead back down to four now. It's 17-13. Maybe a little fortunate there. That was leaking a little, maybe leaking a lot, but he got it. Yeah, he actually was able to make it work. How about the body language though, right? As he watched that ball leak to the right, trying to, trying to bring it back in and had just enough to get it done. So still time for the kickoff here. One second to go in the half as this one is away. So we've reached halftime here in a four-point game as we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome everyone to our brand new studios here in downtown Orlando in the EA Sports Halftime Report. It was a terrific first half from the former Cincinnati man, Desmond Ritter. He had a touchdown both in the air and on the ground to help push his guys into the lead at the break. All right, coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point.
The Texans down on the scoreboard, but they do get the first crack here as we are back underway in the second half. And this taken in at the goal line. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. So here's the Texans offense now. They get set to start this third quarter. Well, Charles, we saw a pretty entertaining first half, close ball game. Remember there toward the end of the second quarter, the opposition scored to take the lead. Now we'll see if these guys can get a score of their own to regain that lead. Yeah, they want to have that type of a response, don't they? Because they want to find a way to take control of this ball game one more time. Gauntlet's been thrown down. They want to see if they're ready to answer it. First and 10, it's Stroud. He gets this one to Mechie. It'll go down as a gain of six. And that's going to bring up second down. A six-yard pickup brings up second and four at the 27-yard line. Stroud now on second down. And this one nearly intercepted. Boy, that would have been a great time for their first pick. But instead, it's third down. They start looking for big time corners. We're going to start with athleticism, but without technique, you're not going to make plays as one we just saw there. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. From the gun on third down, here's Stroud. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have a Texans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, part of their struggles in the first half was their inability to convert consistently on third down. But how about this well-designed play? Gave himself plenty of options and able to get the hook up and keep the drive going. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Play action. Stroud now. This is caught. It's Woods. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. That's good for 28 yards. A couple of first downs right in succession, and this is an offense that can really use a good drive, and they're off to a fast start here. So they move from 136 over to the other as they come up on first down. Stroud will look to throw once more. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. They'll try again from the 36 on second and 10. Second and 10, Stroud to throw yet again here. A short one going to be taken in here by Schultz. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons' 24-yard line. Texans passing game in rhythm right now, picking up another first. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. They'll run on first down with Singletary. He'll get this down to the 21, just on the edge of the red zone. What a luxury to have a guy like this who can not only spell your starter, but can come in and keep drives going. From the 21, here's second down and seven. Pierce takes it straight ahead. Three yards on the pickup. That's going to set up an interesting third and about four to go. Not a big run, not an explosive run, but they've held the ball for plenty of plays on this drive. They're just trying to impose their will on the defense right now. This will be play number nine of the drive here as they need four yards on third down. A shotgun snap to Stroud. And he knocks the ball away and it falls incomplete. The third down battle won by Atlanta's defense. Solid coverage. What an excellent defensive stand there in the red zone. Nice tight coverage. They certainly recognized how important it was to bring up fourth down here. Fairbairn able to put this one through, and that'll bring him back within a point. 
So a good kick there to polish off the drive with three points. Yeah, coaches always talk about finishing a drive with a kick. Two of them give you points, either an extra point or, in this case, a field goal. Fairbair now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. Cordero Patterson to return it, bringing it out of the end zone. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. Here comes the Falcons offense. It's their first possession of the second half now. Falcons now with a first and 10 at their own 22. They begin the drive with Robinson. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. They suspected it was a power play up the middle coming at them. And boy, were they right. That defense got downhill in a hurry and limited them to just a couple on first down. From the 24 now, here's the second and eight. Working from the gun, Ritter. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. That goes for a gain of 31. I guess that answers the question of whether or not they're going to try to play conservative and protect this lead in the third quarter. And I think this is something we're seeing more and more of in the NFL. Teams not playing to protect leads. Teams playing to extend them. And now some disagreement down on that sideline. The red flag is out, and we're going to get a challenge. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. After review of the play, the ruling on the field stays. So the challenge there does not go their way. This will indeed remain a completed pass. On oh, first and ten, it's Robinson. Inside the 40 to about the 38. 64 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Well, if you like the guys who run the ball, you're enjoying watching this. But the other guys, especially the defense coordinator, trying to figure out an answer on how to slow down the running game, I think maybe starts to call more blitzes because you can call run blitzes in order to try and get more people to the point of attack. On second down, Ritter. He's got his pass catching tight end. That's Pitts. And Pitts is going to pick up a Falcons first down as he'll get this down to the 30-yard line. When the offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they've become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. They'll run this one right with Robinson. And he tried to bounce it outside, but they'll stop it behind the line. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Well, it's almost football 101 that you preach to your safeties. Don't let anyone get behind you. You're the last line of defense. But he didn't let the play come to him. He went to the play. How about that read and recognition and finishing off that one behind the line of scrimmage? On second down, another shot for Robinson. And this one also slow and developing as he's maybe getting back here to the line of scrimmage, but not much more than that. He couldn't get the edge there, wasn't sealed, so maybe not all on the guy running the football all the time on those tosses and the pitches that go to the outside. No, not at all. I would agree with that totally because sometimes the defensive guys, they win the edge battle. And when they do that, there's no place for the running back to go, and especially for offensive linemen trying to get out ahead. With their footwork and speed, it was negligible on that play. No gain at all for the offense. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Well, that 
certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. They'll run with Robinson. And the hole closes quickly here. He can fight only to about the four. Only a yard on the pickup there. Second and goal. He was hoping to get to the edge, but they did a really nice job of forcing him back inside. That's excellent fundamental defensive football. Don't let them outside where they can really shred your defense. Second and goal from inside the five. Robinson again. And he gets in. Touchdown Atlanta. B. John Robinson taking it in from four yards out. And they are able to add on to their advantage. Well, this offensive line has really stepped up to the challenge here because those mastodons, they've been sensational clearing holes all game long. And this is great work down here near the goal line to give their back the space he needs to work his way into the end zone. Two able to connect on the extra point, and the lead is up to eight. That time, a nine-play drive. And it was Bijan Robinson who took it home with a touchdown run. Touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. And now out comes Houston. And they had a long drive last time, but they had to settle for a field goal, and I'm sure that's how it felt to them, settling. They probably should have gotten in the end zone. Yeah, not out and out joy, right? Because that's what you get when you put the ball in the end zone. But there are benefits to that type of a long drive. Your defense gets a chance to take a break, adjust a little bit, maybe get themselves ready to get back out on the field and play a little bit better. So they'll take the benefit even though they wanted the six points. Yeah, maybe wore down the other defense. We'll see. It'll go as a gain of four, and that'll make it second down. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. Pierce now up the middle. And only able to get two here, stopped at the 30. Third and four. Here's Stroud. He's going to get that to his running back out of the backfield. And he is going to have a Texans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. One well, of my old teammates called me the other day when he was watching the game. He's like, man, try to watch an NFL game and trying to account for their passing game. That's difficult. And just when you think you get everything covered, here comes a back out of the backfield. And in this case, he picks up a first down. Stroud now on first and 10. This ball caught by Mechie. And yeah, he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. Call that a very strong gain of 24. First and 10, it's Pierce. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. He can rack up those tackles in bunches in the run game from that middle linebacker spot. And what he has to do is make sure he congratulates the guys in front and tells them thanks a lot because as the guy in the middle, the Mike linebacker, you're counting on your front three, your front four, your front five, whatever you've got in front of you 
to take up all the blocking, allow you to roam and hit. And that's what he did on that play. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. Now play number seven of the drive as they're looking at a third and ten. They'll run out of the gun with Singletary. And he will lose yardage back to the 34-yard line. That'll back him up two yards and also bring up fourth. You can almost see the wheels turning for the offensive coordinator there. Edge pressure you want to use against them. Oftentimes when they get into the backfield, they're disrupting things. But if they get there too quickly, you can actually slip the ball to a runner and get past them. That didn't happen on that play, though. The kick by Fairbairn is good, and that'll get the lead down to five. It can be a thankless job sometimes to be a kicker, but they're thanking him right now. That's now four field goals. He's kept him in the game. He sure has. That offense has got to find its rhythm because I'm not sure that just kicking field goals is going to allow them to win this game. the made field goal he'll send this one away and makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23 yard line Atlanta now coming out on the field for this offense Charles remember the last time they were out here marched it nearly the full length of the football field and a lot of the attack went through the air so now they're seeing if they can duplicate that performance Okay, if I show my age a little bit, partner, because I can hear my high school coach, John Ford. I can hear his voice in my head. Laddie, when you put the ball in the air, three things can happen, and two of them are bad. But the way the game's being played now, this is just part of what they do. So I don't think they should change anything at all. They've been dominant. Keep throwing it around. And he's going to be taken down right at the line. No gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Well, the stats that matter on this play don't help a team very much unless of course you're playing defense if you're getting points per reception you got a reception but yeah no yardage great job by the defense though they they read through that one they read through it gave up no yardage and people got credit for tackles pretty good deal and it looked like he got the feet down did he yes it's a catch as it is, but in man coverage with a pretty deep pass downfield, really tough to contain. And it's so difficult because every play, you've got to consider he might try and run past you. So your goal as a defensive back is to give him plenty of cushion, meaning lots of space between you and him. If he wants to catch the short stuff, come up and secure the tackle, hit him a bunch during the game, and try and keep him in front. But if you turn your head for a second, if your concentration wanes, bye -bye. he just takes off and goes. And I think that's what we just saw there. Now Pinion with a kickoff honors following the touchdown. Taken at the goal line. And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. Offense back out there along with Damian Pierce. He's had a good performance, moved the ball effectively on the ground. Of course, he has the one touchdown. And when you're able to move it as effectively as you've described, that leads to finding a way into the end zone, and now he's just trying to do it for a second time. And, of course, with that comes additional yardage. Yeah, looking for additional yardage, and again, that second score here in the third quarter. Stroud sets up the play action. Swings this one out wide for Pierce. 
And he'll have this past the 30 prior to going out of bounds. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards picking up the first. Well, they certainly had success throughout this contest getting him the ball in the passing game. And there he picks up another first down. Whatever they saw going into this one, they've been able to capitalize on it. And no adjustment has been made to take it away. And they'll throw it with Stroud here, first and ten. And he finds his target, it's Schultz. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 13-yard gain yet again, just like last play. Ah, that's tough to play zone defense when they can just curl up right there in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we can talk about finding the soft spot defensively. How do you make sure they don't find the soft spot like they did there? tough to do because what they normally will do is run routes that'll pull you out of that spot that they want to get into. That's what we call not taking the cheese, right? Don't go for the mousetrap. But it's hard to do because when you see a guy cutting that in that direction, you tend to go towards him. Eight more yards this time coming off back-to-back -back first down pickups. We have played three quarters. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now in Atlanta. Two yards to go, second down. It's Texans football, but they trail here as we get started in the fourth quarter. Uh, give to Pierce. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Now, yes, a two-possession game, but a good chunk of time on the clock, so they have the ability still there to run it on second and short, but maybe they need to pick it up a bit. You're right. They did pick up the first down there, but they, as you mentioned, they have to pick up the pace now because it's a two-possession game. They've got to get there twice to make sure they have a chance to win. Here's Pierce on the counter, and that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. Big Calais Campbell fighting through to make the play in the backfield. That's one where you probably give the ball carrier a bit of a mulligan, right? <laughs> yeah. where, I mean, where was he going to go there? Yeah, you could almost see his brain turning over from our perspective. Just put your foot in the ground and go, except there was no place to put his foot in the ground, and there was no place to go. No room to roam. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. Maybe just a lack of concentration there as he couldn't haul it in. And when you're going across the middle like that, you know, he's running that drag route, you are conscious of all the bodies and the traffic in there. But let's face it, if you're going there, you might as well come down with the football and absorb whatever else happens after that. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Oh, this will be incomplete. The rush gets home just as he was letting that go. That could have been worse. Instead, it's fourth down. We've seen this quite a few times in this game. Offensive line unable to keep leverage, unable to keep people away, facing a lot of pressure. Fortunate, fortunate just to get rid of it. One of the reasons they're down is that inability, though, to stop the pressure. We saw another example of it there. And that is no good. And that will keep this a 12-point game. And this is a commentary of today's kickers and just how good they are that a coach would think about running his guy out there to try a 59-yarder. Here it backfires on them, but as a kicker, you have to appreciate the confidence that they showed in you. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. Well, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. Falcons first and 10 here as Ritter gets them ready. Just shy of midfield at the 49. The Ritter's throw there taken in by Hodge. It'll be a gain of five up second down. Off the play fake, it's Ritter. Toward the sideline, he will have the first down. Good catch, he was able to keep the feet inbounds. Seven yards there. Good enough to move the sticks. Well, that should be a reminder defensively, and I think it's a reminder to myself because you just can't sell. And now the red flag out on the field. We'll have a challenge forthcoming. Play is under review. 
Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. After review of the play, the ruling on the field stands. So the challenge there, unsuccessful, and that means that he'll be out of challenges for the remainder of this ball game. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Ritter from the gun. Got a man and he hits him in stride. Short completion, just four yards at its second down. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. Now Ritter, short throw caught by Pitts, and he is out of bounds inside the 30. Eighth catch for him now, he's been a big factor, and it's a first down. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath, if they've got good hands, then of course they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play. And that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up, not that time. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Another throw coming up here for Ritter. That's going to be caught by Pitts. Touchdown! Kyle Pitts, 27 yards. And the Falcons have pretty well put it away here in the fourth quarter. It seemed like they were so focused elsewhere, they forgot about the tight end spot, and he's the one that burns them there to make this a three-score game here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. I think there might be a little bit of defensive fatigue from those guys on that side of the ball, partner, because they've been spending their time trying to stop them from all angles. This time, the tight end gets them. Coup now for the point after. And he's been a busy man, five for five now, as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. So the drive there took six plays. And it was the tight end, Kyle Pitts, finishing it all off on the touchdown reception. Touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. Houston set to take over. Well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Yeah, it's a good way of pointing things out because now it's not a total loss because as you said, They've scored some points, so there's some plays they can build on, moments where the game plan actually worked. But overall, though, they were just out personnel. They were going up against a team that's playing at an elite level. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. So the completion good for just three. And it's second down. They should have got more out of that, though. He was wide open. I love how emphatic you are with that call because that's exactly what I was thinking. Wide open in the flat. Give him a ball that he can use to get up field with, not just catch and go over the sideline. They cost themselves some yardage there. On second down, it's Stroud. A short one going to be taken in here by Schultz. And he's able to break out a one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Give him a gain of five on the completion. And that'll leave him with a third and two. 
You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. Stroud now on third and two. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have a Texans first down as they're able to convert by plenty there on third and one. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. The throwing again is Stroud. As this complete to Woods. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. Ten yards there, good enough for a Texan first down. Well, I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout, and all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to give up bigger plays, you don't react as fast as you should on other throws. Now this throw caught left side, and he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. A good pick up there, 26 yards. Well, those are the types of plays they probably wish they had made more of in the first three quarters, and this deficit going to be tough to overcome here in the fourth, but a nice first down and a pick up on that throw. Yeah, and this is where as coaches, you're looking for effort and execution, even though the scoreboard is going against you. You want to find out who's going to fight, who's going to scrap, who's going to keep their heads up and continue to play. So eight yards on the completion there, and they'll be left with second and a couple. Uh, coach is always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there, and how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end, let him get some rack. Yeah, but when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense are just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. Going for it with Pierce. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Man, these guys may not win this ball game, but you certainly can't fault the effort of this man here today. He's been a real thorn in their sides all afternoon. And that last carry puts him over the 100-yard mark. They'll run here with Pierce. Boy, oh, shifts pick. His way into the end zone for a Texans touchdown. Damian Pierce with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Texans have got it back to a two score game here in the fourth. Fairbairn now to add the extra point. And they're able to cut the deficit to 12. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it was Damian Pierce closing things out with a touchdown run. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. From his end zone, here comes Patterson. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. Atlanta now coming out on the field. This game was really a tussle, seemed like just a moment ago, and now they've got the momentum. A couple of scores on their last pair of drives and a two-score lead. I think here now you just you go conservative, right? Run the football, work the clock. You know, I usually agree with you, but I'm going after them right here. I really? want to put this bad boy away. I wouldn't be afraid to throw it. They've got all the confidence, all the momentum on their side. Go ahead and take your dagger shots and try and finish this one off. I disagree vehemently. And now off to the races, down the right side. It's a big play there for Atlanta. 43 yards. And this is seemingly how it's been all game long. This defense has been just a step too slow. And here they're burned again. Another big play.
So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. Ritter fires quickly out wide. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. The Falcon passing game looking good on this drive as they get the first down. Well, normally you might say start running the football. You've got the lead here in the fourth quarter, but the way that they passed it with such success, I don't know, maybe keep throwing it. Yeah, I think you brought up something that goes against conventional wisdom, right? At this stage of the game, you would think you would switch to a running attack, but you're exactly right. They've thrown it so well throughout the game, and trusting this quarterback, I think he continue to do so. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. Second down and a run by Robinson. And they'll lose yardage here, knocked back to the 19-yard line. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play, so now third down coming up. One thing rookies need to learn at this level and quick, make a cut, be decisive, and go. Because in college, you could dance around and wait for a hole to open because you're probably a better athlete than most of the guys on the field, but not on the NFL level. Ritter throwing on third down. And this is caught for a Falcon touchdown. Kadir Hodge from 19 yards away. And the Falcons have opened up a three-score lead as they pull away here in the fourth. Boy, he has been fun to watch throwing the football in this one. It's certainly not fun for that defense, though, Charles. Now up to four touchdown passes in this ball game. Yeah, we're supposed to be neutral, but I'm feeling their pain right now because he has absolutely carved up this secondary. A clinic on how to attack a defense and take them out of the game. Extra point by Koo, up and good. And that will make this a 19-point game. Texans 26. Now Pinion with a kickoff honors following the touchdown. And he returns this to the 22. Damian Pierce taking the field with the rest of the Texans offense. He's already hit pay dirt twice. He's up over 100 yards. He is feeling good. And he's just zipping along today. Everything coming together for him. It's that type of a day that you see a back just got to have a grin on his face every time his number is called because he doesn't feel like there are going to be any lost yardage plays. Nothing but big-time positive runs. Making the sideline grin as well. On first down, here's Stroud. He's going to air it out deep for Woods. And incomplete on the deep ball. That's coverage you'd expect to see in a tie game late. Not in a lopsided game like this. They are not letting up. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Now Stroud. He gets this one to Mechie. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. And the offense moving quickly to the line. Stroud on third down now. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have a Texans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. A three-score game here late. You can probably rule out the comeback, but certainly some kind of a moral victory to be had if they can get a few more points to close things out and to that end a nice pass play there to push things downfield yeah and we know in this league a loss is a loss and no one wants anything to count as a moral victory or boy something that feels a little bit cheap but they trim that lead down to just two scores that's still a benefit to this squad so they were looking to throw, holding on a big right tackle. That's real simple, partner. Keep your hands inside in the chest area. 
you're probably okay. You get it out on the shoulders, get them wide, you just got to pick up a holding call. Stroud to throw it. Gets the dump off to Pierce. They'll give him four yards there, and it'll be second down. And now it looks like they're going to be in the hurry up. Here's Stroud. He'll get the hook up there to Woods. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And that's going to lead to a third and 12. Simple drag route here, lined up out left and tried to work his way back across the field. You probably saw me twitch there, partner, because I think he wanted the ball a little bit sooner. By the time he looked it in, defender was right on him. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So it's Texans football as we welcome you back. They face a third down now as they try to find a late score. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Not sure what happened there, but he just didn't get the right read on the coverage that time. Pass wasn't where it needed to be, and that will send them back to the drawing board. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Fourth down, fourth quarter. Here's Stroud. This will be complete to Mechie. And unable to break away. They stop him a few yards shy. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Falcons will take control of the football in great field position. Well, at this stage of the game in the second half, down three scores, I guess they felt like they needed to push. And let's face it, with this deficit, if they give up another score here after they didn't get it, does it really matter? Right. It really doesn't. They had to go and try and make something happen if they had any chance of winning this game. Give left side to Robinson. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. They'll run again here with Robinson. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. Four yards on the pickup there, and now they're left with a third and eight. Charles, why didn't they just take the knee there? You're asking the question that I'm asking as well, because we've seen a lot of football where coaches decide maybe they get a little greedy. I don't know if they're doing it for stats or for what reason. We've seen it happen in college. How about in the NFL? The miracle of the Meadowlands. All they had to do was take a knee, and the game was over. The Giants ran it one more time. Ball popped free. Philadelphia picks it up and wins the game. What year was that? 1978. I think it was in November. 14 yards there and a Falcon first down. And now a tip of the cap to the man under center, Charles. He just went over 400 yards passing in this ball game. He's got the touchdown passes to boot, taking pretty good care of the ball. Just all around a really solid performance. Yeah, just check, 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 and check, right? Because he certainly showed he was worthy of the trust that his team put in him. A handful of touchdowns to his credit thus far. Now he's just crossing off yardage milestones and win or lose. His name has to be in serious discussion for player of the game. Uh, Charles, a lot of happy faces heading into the tunnel as this one ends, and understandably so. Not only did they get the win, but boy, their offense was on fire in this ball game. And partner, I have no idea what the top speed is on one of those high-end sports cars. What's the top gear you can get into? This offense, they certainly were there in this one, huh? Everything clicking for them in this contest, the kind of performance that they're going to cherish. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. It's a win for the Falcons here as we say so long from Atlanta.